Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I will be doing a follow-up to the space heater video, but temperatures just haven't been cooperating, so I'm still waiting for a chance to get some more hard numbers. Anyways, today's video is about specifically the all-wheel dry system. As I've gotten quite a few questions about it, and I've also seen some reviewers talk about how the Ionic 5 can decouple or completely disengage the front motor. Now that statement by itself, without more clarification, I think leads to a lot of confusion. Like, is there a button that lets me shut off the front motor whenever I want? Does that mean I can drive in rear-wheel drive mode anytime I want? And that's what we're looking at for today's video. And the bulk of it, it's going to be based off the Ionic 5's Energy Flow Driving Force distribution page, which is a real-time gauge that shows you where the power is being sent. First off, how do you even get to the Energy Flow Driving Force distribution page? On the right-hand side of the steering wheel, You'll want to use the button on the top left. It kind of looks like two menu icons stacked together. Hitting that will take you through the different view modes. You'll also be using the left silver toggle switch directly below it to toggle up or down as certain view modes have more than one page. Looking at the driver's display in the very middle, you'll see the different view modes that you can cycle through. You want to get to the fourth one and you may see the tire pressure monitoring system. You're in the right view mode, but you have to switch pages. So either toggle up or down to get to the right one. And then just for reference, so you can confirm which drive mode I'm in when you see the clips coming up, this is the eco mode, then there's the normal drive mode, and then there's sport mode, which I don't think I'll be using in any of these clips. In the next few clips, It'll be all done in eco drive mode with either a level zero regen or eye pedal regen. As I found, the all wheel drive system seems to behave the same between regen level zero and three, which is that the all wheel drive engages from a stop until about 15 miles per hour. Then you'll see that it actually stops sending power up front. If you continue to speed up beyond the 15 miles per hour, the power will only be sent to the rear motor no matter how quickly you try to accelerate in eco mode. However, if you dip below 50 miles per hour, then try to accelerate, you will engage the front motor and power will be sent up front until you pass 50 miles per hour again. Now, I can't confirm the exact number where it re-engages because I've actually seen it dip down to 10 miles per hour and sometimes it'll send power up front, sometimes it won't. So it may actually depend on if you're driving uphill or downhill or the elevation but definitely by eight or nine miles per hour, no matter what elevation, you will engage the front motor if you try to accelerate. Now, if you try to drive with eye pedal regen in eco mode, you'll notice that you're gonna be sending power to the front and rear motors at all times. No matter what I tried to do, uh, no matter the speed, no matter the change in elevation, it was always sending power up front and to the rear. And that should hold true for all of the drive modes, eco, normal, sport, and snow. Before we move on to the normal drive mode clips, I want to show this chart really quickly, and I will pull it up again at the end. This chart is based on what I'm seeing in the driving force distribution page. Maybe that real-time gauge is inaccurate, and I could be completely wrong about all of this, but that's what I'm going off of. Snow and sport mode send power to both motors. Normal and eco modes send power up front till about 15 miles per hour. Normal mode will still allow you to send power up front based on your throttle application above 15 miles per hour, whereas eco mode will not allow you to send power up front, even if you give it full acceleration above 15 miles per hour. And power is sent to the front in both normal and eco if you dip below 15 miles per hour though that number seems to change depending on conditions and I've seen it as low as 9 miles per hour. For the next few clips, I'm driving in normal mode with level 0 regen. And you'll see me trying to find that switchover number where it decides to send power up front versus not sending it up front. It doesn't send it at 10 miles per hour, but then it does send it at 8 miles per hour in this first clip. Then you'll see that it can send power up front if I accelerate hard enough at speeds above 50 miles per hour. And in the very last clip, you'll see more examples where it's not sending power to the front while I'm going 10 miles per hour.
So here we are back at the chart and I'll just highlight a few things that we noted from the demos. First off, iPedal regen in any drive mode, most importantly eco and normal, will continuously send power to both the front and rear motors. So in terms of maximizing your efficiency, you want to stay out of iPedal regen when you're accelerating. It's great for when you're braking, but not so much when you're accelerating. Now another thing to note is supposedly in eco mode, the front motor will engage if the car senses wheel slip, which I think would be a good idea. I haven't actually tested it, but hope it's true. Now in summary, I think the easiest way to understand this all-wheel drive system is answering this question. Can I begin at point A, start the car, and then drive to point B and shut off the car without ever engaging the front motor in the all-wheel drive model? And the answer to that question is no. You can disengage a front motor during certain driving conditions, which are shown in this chart, and that's basically any time above 15 miles per hour in eco mode or any time above 50 miles per hour in normal mode, depending on your throttle usage. So you could still theoretically do almost your entire commute in rear wheel drive mode. For example, if you live right off the freeway and your freeway commute doesn't have much traffic and your office is located just off the freeway, then you probably only engage your front motor maybe a handful of times for maybe a minute's worth of driving. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope it clears up any questions you might have. Like I said again, I'm basing it all off the distribution page that I'm seeing in the car, so I could be wrong, but feel free to send me your comments and questions. Thanks for watching.